how to handle the risk risk register for your uh, project plan and for the individual assignment. The risk register, we chose a, a template that was very watered down compared to what you might see in in the real world, but I think it's got enough information on it that you're going to be able to understand the concept uh, of how things are used, and that's really the goal here. So the first way, first way you can get some exposure with it is through our, <coughs> excuse me, the assignment that's relatively lighthearted, where you just describe out uh, the risk, fill out the risk register for a new job offer. So that's something that probably some people through this class are hopefully going to experience in the near future, or if, if that was their intent at least. So this risk register is a way for you to categorize and catalog, sorry, try to say those together, some of the risks associated with making the change. So to describe it out, first your risk number is just simply a, a that, it's a number. Uh, it's not really necessarily needed, but it's a way to refer back to a specific value as opposed to having to try to describe the whole thing out. So if anyone else is using it, then they can go through the whole, just having the number to identify the line item. Risk description. Let's go in with um, risk description for this change. We'll do a couple examples in this recording. Uh, good risk description. Maybe the maybe the, the company is not a good fit. So we'll put company culture. You're a lot more flexible. Um, and they're a lot more straight laced. So maybe that's a cultural risk for you. So comment on the risk. Trends in background will be things like a, um, I am a little more on the description essentially. I am more Date the risk is assessed will be today. Severity score. Uh, this could be pretty big if that happens and you're not a good cultural fit. One to five is our scale. If you're not a good cultural fit, uh, that can really have a big influence on how well you do at your employer. Likelihood. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, two because it's not terribly likely. Most most companies are pretty adaptive to a workforce these days. Otherwise, they have trouble retaining good talent. And our numeric risk value is where we take E and F, multiply it together, and that just gives us a numeric weight to the risk, if you will. Um, for this, we're going to go ahead and say improving, and that's based on market trends where people wouldn't be able to hire good talent unless they were a good company culture. The risk owner, for our purposes on this assignment, is going to be you the whole time. Your strategy here, um, they list out some exam examples, avoid, reduce, transfer, do nothing. For this, we're going to reduce the likelihood, and then it would help to say what you're, how you're going to do that. So I'm going to reduce the likelihood by researching the company. You can do that through... Glassdoor. And you're going to follow this through for the risks on this new job. Uh, risk could be um, current employment longevity lost. Commenting on the risk. Um, I have tenure helps with stability and vacation package. Date the risk success. I looked into that today. Severity. I'm going to probably say a two. It doesn't seem that severe. Um, but that's this is where it's going to depend upon yourself. Keep in mind this is a personalized assignment. So that risk severity can change dramatically. Maybe you've been in a company for 25 years, and leaving after that 25 years would be difficult. Whereas I've been at my employer for two years, so it's not as much of an issue for me. The likelihood score, that is going to be a full five, because if you're changing, you're losing that. Uh, that's 100% that's occurring. There's no undoing that. So 
that's lost gives you a numeric value of 10. Now a lot of people like to uh, excuse me, like to order these is a most severe to least severe. That's a personal preference though, so it's not really required for our assignment. Change in uh, risk? Uh, no change. It, I guess it could be getting worse because the longer you're at the company, the higher that severity would go. Job owner on that is me. And risk strategy. Um, I'm going to do nothing. There's nothing I can do. Uh, I can kind of research the company, but other than that, there's nothing really I can do. I either leave the company and go to a different one, or I don't. So that's how you'd fill out the risk register. Uh, again, this assignment, don't overthink it. It's really just designed to get you used to the idea of thinking about how to catalog risk and put some numeric values to it and how to document some of the things that you get nervous about. Uh, that's really all it is. So for the job assignment, that's really simple. For our project plan, it's a little more complex. You have to put yourself into the case study and think about what those risks are for the project and then uh, afterwards to change. So <coughs> what are the risks for the project? They're going to be things like um, poor requirements in your description. And that poor requirements with the comment on it, what's it lead? It leads to um, bad design because the, the person who's doing the coding didn't understand the risk. I mean, didn't understand, I'm sorry, the requirements very well. When um, chronologically did it occur in the project plan? How severe would it be if it happened? How likely is it to happen, etc. So you're going to go through and list out all of the project risks associated in the case study and fill it out just like you did for your job change assignment. Hopefully that gives you an insight onto how the risk register works. Uh, there's also other links within the course module that take you to some YouTube videos and some descriptions on, on this content. So thank you very much for your time. I hope this project goes uh, well for you.